Hi, One Fam. It's awesome to have you join us again in a season where, like you, we are the extension of God's plan, light, and gift to our world. And I'm excited to welcome you to church. We have people tuning in from all over the world, and we'd we'll love to know where you're connecting from. So, Feel free to share your location with us in the comment section. If you are in Lagos, Abuja, Africa, or part of our global family in Europe or the Americas, just share it. You never know, you might just make a new friend today. As we start the service, get ready to have an amazing time in God's presence. We believe He has something special in store for you, and we encourage you to share your insights or blessings in the comment section throughout the service. We are always looking for ways to improve and serve you better. So if you have any feedback for us, please don't hesitate to share it. And if you're not already following us on all social media platforms, do hit the follow button now. Yes, like right now. You will be notified of all our upcoming services and events. Have you heard that after a test comes a testimony? So if you have one or more to share, we would love to hear it. Your story could inspire and encourage someone else today. There is love in sharing, so please be encouraged to share this experience with friends and family. Invite them to join the service too, so they can be blessed. You may want to say this with me. I am the light of the world. I shine and stand out in darkness. I am the salt of the earth. I have taste. I influence and impact my generation. I am as visible as a city set on a hill. Wow, that's God's plan for you. So prepare to disconnect from all distractions right now and immerse yourself in God's presence as we connect you to the main service. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have a blessed time with us. See you.
Hello everyone, welcome to another midweek event here at One Church. I trust that it's been a good week so far. Uh, I pray as always that the rest of the week will be the best of the week for you in Jesus' name. I say a big welcome uh, to this beautiful month of November. Praise God. Yeah, this is uh, the 6th of November. Welcome to a brand new month. This is the 11th month of the year. Like I was saying last Sunday, this is the November you spoke about that time. You are right there. The year is literally winding up. Amen. But the favors you are due will not wind up. God's grace over your life, amen, is not winding up. If you believe that, say a big amen. I, however, believe that it is uh, most important at a time like this that you take stock, all right? How are you doing? How is work? How is your career? How are the plans that you set out under God at the start of the year? What do you need to review? What do you need to start? What do you need to stop? What do you need to continue? You know, um, all of that is very important because we literally have two months to go. And there's still so much that God wants to do through you. There's still so much the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to you uh, by way of instruction, by way of impressions. Amen. Um, and there's so much that you can do to, uh, you know, bring in great results. And so I'm praying that the rest of this year, you will not be missing in action in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that the rest of this year, nothing missing, nothing broken will be your portion. That every word God has spoken over your life will find expression in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please say a big amen in the comment section. Let's just welcome one another and have some interaction. Uh, also, please invite someone into this uh, meeting. Let's, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're being more conscious about being digital evangelists. So if you haven't done that already, if you haven't invited someone uh, for this meeting, please just put it out there, your social media and what have you, um, and let us... Um, you know, get more people um, in. Praise God. All right. Uh, so thank you uh, for being a part of this. We will break bread today. By that, I mean, we'll partake of the communion, the Lord's table. So if you do not have any communion elements, you have an opportunity to grab some now. If you have a little bread, little biscuit, crackers, you know, in the house, um, a drink, the uh, uh, fruit juice, ribena, any of that, uh, you know, would be great. Get the friend, get friends and family around the table also, and let us be blessed together. If you are driving, please, like I always say, just listen. That is good enough. All right. Um, ensure also when you get home that you partake of the communion elements. Before we share communion, and of course, before I pray blessing over us. You know, before we, our hearts go out to God in prayer, I'm going to share the word. And I want to look around that subject, um, the authority, amen, of the believer, the authority that the believer carries. It's very, very, very important that we remind ourselves, amen, constantly about this subject. I want to go to a text that I used most recently, Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 22. Amen. Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 22. Paul says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working 
of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Praise God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And the Apostle Paul is reading or is is declaring this prayer over the Ephesian church, amen, after a very important announcement or after he received very important information. And what was that information? He said, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love to all the saints. In other words, after I heard that a church had been established in Ephesus, I got on my knees and I prayed a most important prayer. And that prayer involved God's people receiving the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I think that's also important. So this wasn't just general wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. All right. In the knowledge of him. That was his first prayer point that I believe was his most important prayer point, that the believer would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowing God, in their interaction with God, in their walk with God, that this brand new church, these brand new believers, amen, would be versed in how they understand God and how he works, because that was the only way to maximize that relationship and make the best of it. That was the only way to indeed walk in the truth of their calling as a believer or as believers. He prayed that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened, that they may know the hope of his calling. That was the only way they could know the hope of his calling. It was the only way they could know the glory of God's inheritance in the saints. It was the only way they could know the exceeding greatness of his power, amen, towards us. That is the power God has given us. It was the only way, amen, they could realize the authority that they had. It was the only way they could realize the power that they had. It was the only way they could realize the strength that they had. He said he worked it in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So all of that force, all of that life force, if you will, that was exercised in resurrection, amen, that was exercised in ascension, that was exercised, amen, when Jesus was enthroned at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says all of that power is available to the believer, but many will not without the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowing God and what God has provided for the believer. He said that at that right hand in heavenly places, it was far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Not only that, he also put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the church, of all all things to the church, which is his body, amen, the fullness of him who fills all in all, amen. Christ is the head, all right? The church is the body. Last time I checked, your head could be nowhere without the body. You know, you know, if... I mean, imagine I said, oh, I saw Emmanuel at uh, Blanco, you know, but it was only his head I saw. God forbid. <laughs> yeah, the, the head does not exist without the body. Likewise, the body does not exist without the head. And what is your point, Pastor T? My point is, 
If Jesus was enthroned, you were enthroned. If Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, you are at the right hand of the Father. If Jesus is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, then you are, amen, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. I want you to say in the comment section, I am far above principality, power, might, and dominion. Hallelujah. Not only that, he put all things under his feet. I want you to say that also. All things are under my feet. Amen. This month of November, nothing will overwhelm you in the name of Jesus. This month of November, nothing will confound you. Amen. Nothing will bamboozle you. Hallelujah. Nothing will flabbergast you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he wrote this prayer after he realized that they had come to Christ. And he realized that the basic or the number one need of the new believer is a spirit of wisdom and revelation that is, uh, sorry, in the knowledge of God. And uh, that they would understand, for instance, that they had a new position. Amen. You have a new position. And the Bible is clear about that position. Yeah, it's not where you used to be. Hallelujah. It is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but that which is to come. As if to make my point, Ephesians 2, 6 says, uh, he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places, amen, in Christ Jesus. If you've ever seen these things, they call Russian dolls, yeah, where when you, when you unscrew one, another doll comes out. Then you unscrew it, another doll comes out. Then you unscrew it, another doll comes out, yeah? That's exactly where we are. We are that third door in there. We are hidden in Christ, we are hidden in God. What this means is that whatever will destroy you needs to guess, get past Christ, need, needs to get past God. You understand that? That is your new position. Sat together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yeah, this means, for instance, you were raised with him. You are seated with him. You are now positioned with him. You were raised with him. You are seated with him. You are now positioned with him. There's a text I want you to look at. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 that we just read, but this time the, uh, the, from the 8th verse. Ephesians chapter 2 from the 8th verse. And Paul is talking about us being saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on the good works, that he has before ordained that we should walk in. So essentially we are saved by grace through faith that we may walk in our prophetic destiny. That's all it's saying, all right? You are saved by grace through faith that you may walk in your prophetic destiny. And there's some notes I would love you to take at this time. Yep, as we, we begin to round up. Uh, number one is that your grace is in the place of your purpose. You could call it your destiny. You could call it your prophetic destiny. Yeah. Your grace is in the place of purpose. Your grace is in the place of purpose, all right? That thing that, for instance, you were trained for, you find out you are at your most relaxed when you're doing those things, yeah? There's someone here, maybe you're a very good marketer. You, you can sell 
ice to an Eskimo. You can sell sand to an Arab. Yeah, you, you are such a profound marketer. Yeah, you will find that you are your most relaxed. Some people call it your sweet spot. You know, where, where your preparation, your opportunities, your creativity, where everything meets. Amen. Where it meets. Grace is easy. Yeah, Jesus said to uh, uh, the disciples, where he says, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. You know, uh, learn of me. It, uh, the, I think it's the message translation. It says, um, uh, come and learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Yeah, because there are rhythms to grace and it is unforced. So you're, you, will, you will operate at your most effective, your most spiritual, all right, in the place of your purpose, your purpose prophetic destiny as it were and i'm saying that to go there to go somewhere i'm saying that to say that your authority as a believer is deep, deeply linked to your purpose why your grace is for an assignment your authority is for an assignment they therefore will be most effective when you are fulfilling that assignment very simple example a doctor is most effective or he has more authority uh, uh, in a medical emergency or in a hospital than he would at a mechanics workshop yeah so imagine a uh, medical doctor going into a mechanics workshop you see at that point he's out of his zone of grace at that point he has to listen at that point, he has to pay. Yeah? Because he has walked out of his territory and he has walked into another man's territory and that man is in charge in that territory. And I'm saying that your grace, amen, is most potent. Your authority is most effective when you find your place of purpose. So when we talk about the authority of the believer, I want you to link it deeply to the assignment God has given you. Some people, you know, you hear people say, oh, uh, you know, I don't even know how to hear God. I haven't, especially those who say, I haven't heard God for a long time. You know, I like to say that you, you only ask, uh, you, 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 will, you will only hear, amen, to the degree to which you obey. You will only hear to the degree to which you obey. Amen. And you are only as in touch, um, uh, you are only as in touch um, or as effective, let me use that word, um, or as in sync with God. I'm trying to find another word. Um, yeah. Only as in touch as the last instruction you obeyed. The last instruction. Amen. The last instruction. If there's any pending instruction in your life, you say, Pastor, I didn't exactly uh, uh, obey the last one, but I obeyed the one before that. No. Unacceptable. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Hallelujah. It's not going to work. Yeah. A, a mechanic has more authority in his garage. A blessed man has more authority in the place of his purpose and assignment all right uh, two things you must understand you know and I call this uh, the, I call this the le the legality and the vitality of redemption very important everything God has done for us in Christ is already in our possession so so when you read your Bible right, and you hear about what God has done. For instance, by his stripes, we were healed. You see that? That is past tense. Okay? That is already accomplished. The mistake you will make as a believer is when you go into the place of prayer or spiritual warfare, asking for what God has already done. 
Don't forget that the devil is a wily fox. <laughs> yeah, the devil understands scripture. The devil understands the authority of the believer. But many believers don't understand the authority they carry. And the devil isn't going to teach you, by the way. <laughs> yeah? So next time you study your Bible, let, let me use, let me use, um, let me use Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53. Yeah, and verse 5. Let's look at this. In fact, let's go from verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Now, that is gone. Yeah? So as a believer, the only time you grieve, okay, is just that natural human response. Yeah? But it's not a, it's not a grief of hopelessness. Yeah, Paul said, if, if, if as believers we only have hope in this world, um, then we are of all men most miserable. Yeah? He has carried our sorrows. So sorrow is no more your portion. It's been carried. He carried it. He didn't carry some of it. He didn't share it with you. Okay? Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Check this out. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And therefore we are healed by his stripes. Another one is Galatians 3. I love Galatians 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Tell your, tell, put it in the comment section, say I'm redeemed already. Amen. It has happened already. Christ hath redeemed us. We have been redeemed already from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. So, when the believer goes into prayer and say, God, whatever curse may be operating in my life, that believer is unaware of his authority. That believer is unaware of his rights and privileges in Christ. That believer is unaware of his position. That believer is unaware that Christ has already redeemed us from the curse. So what then happens when a believer goes into that place where he's, you know, dabbling in the realm of curse, whatever curses may be upon my life, all of that stuff, or somebody pronounced a curse over your life and it resulted in fear in your heart and things like that, that person doesn't understand where he's sitting in Christ. And what happens is that the devil takes Total advantage of that situation. Yeah? He takes total advantage of that situation. Another one, we are already blessed with every spiritual blessing in the unseen realm. You see that in Ephesians chapter 1 and, and verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3, and this is what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Don't walk around like you will be blessed with spiritual blessings. No, no, no. I have been blessed already. What this means is that everything Every resource that pertains to your destiny is already in heaven's store. What we do, of course, when we pray, when we meditate, when we confess, is that we translate and transfer those things into our earthly realities. 
So uh, Matthew 12, 35, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, he produces or he brings forth good things. He brings forth good things. Hallelujah. I'm going to round up by giving you this quote from A.J. Gordon before we pray. He says, Christian experience is the making real in ourselves of what is already true for us in Christ. I'll say it again. Christian experience is the making real in ourselves of what is already true for us. Amen. In Christ Jesus. The authority that is not recognized by the holder, and this is the crux of tonight's uh, message, will lead to a substandard experience. So your your Christian experience will be substandard. It doesn't mean you won't have victories every now and then, but you will fall so short of God's provision for you. It will be substandard. Yeah, it will lead to a substandard experience. It will lead to the non-fulfillment of purpose. So, so let's use, for instance, a traffic warden. When a traffic warden stops a truck, he's not stopping it in his physical power. He's stopping it in the authority that he has, the authority vested upon him by the president and CNC of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So when he's stopping that truck, he's not stopping it based on his race, based on his tribe, based on his years of experience. No. Amen. No matter how frail looking he is. In fact, if he's not in the mood that day, all he needs to do is that and the truck will stop because the truck doesn't recognize his person or his personality or his persona. The truck recognizes the authority. Amen. That has been vested upon that person such that when, if the truck disobeys, the truck has effectively disobeyed the nation. It has disobeyed the commander in chief of the armed forces. Hallelujah. That same way, uh, 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 see your experience, amen, like Christ's experience. If you, when, when, if Christ never spoke to demons and they refused to, 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 to flee. So put yourself in those shoes. Amen. You never heard where Jesus Christ, oh, they said they needed to go out for a campaign. And they said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm feeling so feverish today. Can we postpone it till tomorrow? So put yourself in those shoes. You never saw at the point they were hungry and they say, oh, you know, salaries haven't been paid this month. We don't even know where we're going to eat. No, no, it never happened. So put yourself in those shoes. All right. And, and, and that is the essence of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Keep putting yourself in those shoes and you will realize daily and realize more. Amen. And come into a greater knowledge and experience of Christ's provision for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to pray tonight. Amen. As we partake of the communion. Amen. I want you to decree and declare that you stand in your authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. Very important. You stand in your authority, your authority in Christ Jesus. Whatever you need to decree right now, begin to do that. The Bible says you will decree a thing and the thing that you decree shall be established. Hallelujah. And God's favor will shine upon your ways. Whatever it is you need to take out of the way in these last two months of the year, decree and declare that they are out of the way because you are sat in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You have divine utterance, amen, coming out of your mouth. And with that, you are building and you are destroying, amen. You are erecting, you are casting down right now in the name of Jesus and to the glory of God. You are decreeing and declaring that you walk in soundness of health. You are decreeing and declaring that you walk in soundness of wealth. You are decreeing and declaring that all things are at your disposal. Amen. You are not denied anything. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken over your life, the lives of your children, over your property. Amen. You 
your, your doors are open for more. Your doors are open to receive more. Your doors are open to see more. Decree and declare that your ears are anointed. Your faculties are anointed. Amen. To hear from God and to obey those instructions and to see results thereby. Decree and declare that these last two months for you, they are filled with the goodness and the grace of God. These last two months are filled with divine results, divine provision, and indeed providence. You will not walk in lack. You will not experience poverty. It says where there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. Amen. Your case will always be different. You will shine that light through all of the doom and the gloom that is going on. That light will shine. Hallelujah. Decree and declare that it will shine. Decree and declare that it will shine. Decree and declare that it will shine. La pozu praticata. Lego shepa legi pa rakado suba. Lengle di kabala kilush de gi pa rakate katush de biyama. Lembre kato va pa yekede. La padon zo pragi taba. Lengle ba kostu pranite. Lange pai ka pela gosto vrakadia. Lenge ba regede. Yekabo shanga barada. Lengre ba kozupa. Legede. Yengro go 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 bosh. Yange ge ge ge. Lege do shanda. Magado shagadaya. Lengre ge 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 ge. Mange do jufrada. Lego zo kagaga. Yege ge. Rogogo. Yakado shte. Lege don kubarata. Lege ge pande bashto. Rakamande ba. Lege do shtega. Lakabai kaba. Lege don je prande. Lakamande. Lege do shtaga. Lenge ba sopranashta. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we bless your holy name. We say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want you to get your communion elements together, amen, uh, around the, the table, get the family together, get the kids, amen, and let's let's have the communion elements um, um, in place, amen. And I want to just pray this prayer over us uh, this evening as we uh, take the last day um, of our fast, hallelujah, Um uh, from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. And Paul prayed, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my blood which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the table of communion and indeed the power of communion, where everything, O oh Lord, you did to displace the power of sin and death over our lives. Father, those things are activated. They come into our experience. And so I'm pronouncing over someone tonight sound health in the name of Jesus. I'm pronouncing over someone long life in the name of Jesus. I'm pronouncing over someone prosperity in the name of Jesus. I'm pronouncing over someone clarity in the name of Jesus. I'm pronouncing over someone freedom from curses, generational sicknesses and diseases. I decree and declare that you are free from the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. We give you praise because your word never failed. It will not start today. Your blood, oh God, and your body, they are still as effective as they were 
when you hung on the cross and gave your life and stood in our stead. And so, Lord, we thank you that the next two months, O oh God, they are sorrow free. The next two months, O oh God, they are sickness free. They are poverty free. They are disease free. They are confusion free. Father, we say thank you. We give you praise as we partake, O oh God, of this body and the blood. We thank you for your blessings over us, over our homes. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. Mm. Praise God. Amen. So I hope you've been able to do that um, in your privacy. Amen. Spend time praying. Also join us tonight as we um, round up our November prayers for 9 p.m. I want you to join us. Be a part of it. Invite someone also and let us round this prayer and fast season up on a high. Hallelujah. Big God bless you again. And thank you for being a part of tonight's meeting. I hope that word was a blessing. Amen. Please spend time to meditate on it. Um, God bless you. I want to uh, invite you uh, for our service this Sunday. Um, we started a series on spiritual maturity. It's called Forged. Amen. Forged. Made in His image. God can save us as we are, but will not use us as we are. He needs to shape you and, amen, uh, put you in order and put you in the position and the place, amen, where He can use you. And so I'm inviting you to be a part of that series Say a big God bless you. I want to welcome our friends. You're here with us for the first time. We do not take your presence for granted. We believe that you are here because God ordained it so. And so we want to honor you. Can I ask that you please signify in the comments section. Amen. Let's just say a big welcome. Big, 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 big welcome. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight's meeting. Amen. You'll see a link. Then the comment section, please use that link. I want you to uh, fill the form it leads you to, amen, so that we can uh, get in touch with you and say thank you for being a part of this meeting. Uh, again, please, you are welcome to our physical experience. We look forward to seeing you. Um, our details will be on the screen. Thank you so much. So I'd love for us at this time to give to God. Amen. It's our custom here at One Church. We do not take it for granted. We believe that giving is a privilege and an honor. Amen. And we act like such. Stewardship is a big deal for us. So can I ask at this time that you uh, give our details out on the screen our property project, our free will offering, your giving of your tithe, amen. Please let us do that. Big God bless you as you give. Uh, I'll say a word of prayer before we then round off. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give out of the abundance that you have given to us. Lord, I'm praying that the dew of heaven will fall upon the works of every man's hands. Let us be blessed by this. Let our offering come to you with a smell that is sweet. We give you thanks. Take all the glory. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. So God bless you for your time today. Thank you for partaking in uh, this meeting. Don't forget to spread the link. Get the word out there. Let's be blessed together. All right. We'll take our closing chart from Proverbs 4 verses 18. And then we do 20 to 23. We can do it together now. It says, my path is as the shining light, it's shining ever brighter onto the perfect day. This week, I pay attention to God's words. I incline my ears onto his saying. His words don't depart from my eyes. I keep them in my heart. For his words are life to me and health to my flesh. This week, I guard my heart with all diligence. For everything I do flows from it. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you.
Many years ago, around 2018 AD, a light shone bright in Shangotedo, and a church was born. The pillars of the church were created by spirit-filled people inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are one sound. To win souls through spirit-filled songs and ministrations, one media to bring the imagination of the church to life on the big screen. Ushering protocol, hospitality and traffic at the front-facing units, they ensure orderliness in and out of service, making members and guests comfortable. Membership team helps new members in one church to know more about us, especially what makes us family. Maturity team helps to continue the process of spiritual growth as you strive to reflect the nature of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. The prayer unit upholds the congregation and the community in prayer. This year, One Church has reached out to even more people to continue to grow as one family through the Life Group program with eight different locations across the city. We are growing smaller to grow bigger. The church has encouraged the growth of both genders by setting up a men's ministry known as King's Men and a women's ministry known as One Woman's Network. But its message isn't just for adults. The junior church and the teen's church ensure that our future is being nurtured the right way God intended. So why would you stick around one church? Because we care for our family. We want them to grow in all areas of their life with the best kind of foundation there is, the foundation of Christ. We invite you to join our services Sundays, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., both online and on-site. First-timers can pick up a welcome pack at the hospitality stand in exchange for the guest card received during service. Also, join us on Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m., online, showing on all our social media platforms. Do come along with a friend. We have a surprise for you. See you soon.